Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and I thank our witnesses for being here today. Um, Mr. Burke, what level of VA employee is normally the one who would send the name to the NICS system, NICS system? So we have a, a rating veteran service representatives and other employees that make the determinations, and I believe the, the feed, if you will, of data from VA to NICS is done as our, at our headquarters level, and that is an automated process on a weekly basis. And what type of training do they receive? Um, all of our rating veteran service representatives, uh, there is uh, training on incompetency determinations and decisions. Medical providers, both vendor and VHA, are required to take incompetency training as well. Um, and that is training that we track through our training management system and other modalities, but they are required to take that training. And would you be able to send us what the competency training is? Uh, yes, ma'am. Send it by mail, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, even if I accept the VA, and I'm a 24-year military veteran, married to a veteran uh, in a family of six of the eight children, my father was also military, as was my grandfather and my uncle. Uh, even if I accept the VA's premises is that those who need help with their finances are a danger to themselves and others, what is done about firearms that are already stored in the home by themselves or other members of the household? If it's not the veteran's firearm, what happens to that firearm? Um, first, let me thank you and your family for your collective service. I may have to take that one for the record. That is not something that VA, whether VBA, VHA, or NCA, um, is, uh, is um, responsible for. And if you have 190,000 veterans who are currently under a fiduciary um, a person <clears throat> status, why do you not know how many firearms have been confiscated in reference to Ms. Brownlee's question? Uh, for, for clarification, it's um, 109, um, not to correct you, ma'am, but just want to make sure for the record it's, it's accurately portrayed. It's 109,000, um, and about 63% of that are veterans. Um, in our fiduciary program, we also have spouses. Um, but with that, again, we report the incompetency numbers to DOJ, and there's no other engagement or involvement with us reporting or receiving information on numbers of weapons uh, collected, taken back, et cetera. So is there a, a HIPAA reason why you would not be able to collect that information, and don't you think that's valuable information to have? I, I do believe that's in DOJ's lane. Um, if Mr. Barron's has anything he'd like to add, please, please feel free, but I don't think that's VA's uh, responsibility. But before Mr. Barron's answered, have you requested that information? Have you sent a letter requesting the information for your records? Not, not to my knowledge, no, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Barron's? Yeah, just to say that this is a government-wide reporting program administered by DOJ, so uh, you know, VA is one of, of, among all the federal agencies that comply, and I, I'm not aware that there's a, a general report out from DOJ on the actions taken. I think that would be important information. I uh, um, appreciate my colleague bringing up uh, the question. Does the VA have any evidence that the current system in place for sending names to uh, NICS list is actually working? And to put it simply, has there ever been a study done if it's actually providing any level of suicide prevention, i.e., if that weapon is confiscated, confiscated and a veteran had suicidal ideology or dementia that led to suicide ideology, having read other testimony? Um, do we have a correlation, a status? Are we preventing because veteran suicide have gone up, not gone down? So I would say that the studies that we cited in the testimony uh, do reflect that um, you know, the uh, inability to access firearms does prevent suicides. And, and again, this is something that we are continuing, not just VBA, but VA as a whole, focusing on suicide prevention. We do cite, cite some studies. I think some panel members may have some further information, but um, we do know, and I think it was in my oral statement, that 90% um, of suicide attempts with a firearm are successful, meaning there's a fatality. But when those weapons are removed, only one out of five that would have used a gun find an alternate means to commit suicide. My, my time is almost um, over, but I did not see in, uh, in those studies that there was a correlation. So yes, having access to a firearm, whether or not they were successful. My question is, in a person who's placed in a fiduciary status, what's that relationship? And I read the uh, physician's testimony from Duke, but I didn't see that there's a correlation with fiduciary status and firearms and suicide. Uh, that's more the point, uh, since we're talking about a fiduciary status. Uh, thank you very much, I yield back. 
Thank you, Dr. Um, um, Representative Budzinski, you are recognized for five minutes. 